NNPC should have privatized refineries before rehabilitation. That is according to Atiku Abubakar. FIRS to boost tax revenue collection by 57% in 2024. Those will be our hot topics for this morning. But don't forget that we're also going to have Off the Press where we look at the headlines on our national dailies. Very good morning to you and welcome to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today we'll be looking at very, very important issues. But first of all, let's go to what caught our fancy in the course of the last 24 hours on top, top trending. The IGP orders intensified efforts to disseminate or kidnappers in FCT. The Inspector General of Police, IGP Kayode Betoko, has called for the intensification of efforts to decimate kidnappers and other criminally minded individuals in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. The IGP spoke on Tuesday after a meeting with the force management team and tactical squads in Abuja following the worrying state of security in the nation's capital. According to a statement by the force spokesman Muyiwa Dejobi, the IGP expressed deep concern over the unfortunate events and emphasized the need for decisive action to curb such heinous crimes. In the meeting, which focused on uh, a comprehensive review of current security challenges, strategic planning, and the deployment of tactical resources to tackle emerging threats, the IGP emphasized the need for a coordinated and intelligence-driven approach to address the evolving security landscape. Adejobi explained that tactical squads were briefed and directed to intensify efforts on the deployment of proactive measures to prevent criminal activities and protect citizens. Despite the worsening security situation in the FCT, the IGP assured Abuja residents of improved conditions, while assuring Nigerians, especially residents of the Federal Capital Territory, of improved security, the IGP ordered the Deputy Inspector General of Police Department of Operations to personally coordinate the upscale security strategies and placed to decimate kidnappers and other criminally minded individuals in the FCT and immediately restore normalcy. Our second top trending is that U.S. is to return $8.9 million looted under President Jonathan to Nigeria. A royal court in Jersey, United States, has reportedly ruled that stolen assets worth $6.9 million, that is $8.9 million, will be repatriated to Nigeria. The said assets were allegedly diverted by Nigerian government officials in 2014 under the guise of purchasing arms to fight Boko Haram terrorists. The court ruled that the money deposited in a Jersey bank account was likely stolen by officials in the Nigerian government in 2014. Controversies had surrounded the purchase of weapons in the fight against insurgency, with the then National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki being accused of diverting funds meant for security equipment during Jonathan administration. Also in the late 2014, a private jet was arrested in South Africa with $10 million cash, which was allegedly meant for the purchase of military weapons. However, the order of the Royal Court in Jersey followed a forfeiture notice to the court by Jersey Attorney General Mark Temple KC. The court held that the funds were deposited in a Jersey bank account and were not used for the arms purchase. Temple said the government of Jersey was in close partnership with Nigeria on the repatriation of the funds. The AG claimed part of the funds were shared with family members of politicians in the then ruling People's Democratic Party ahead of the 2015 general election. F okay, fire rather raises College of Education in Cross River State. That's the third trending issue. The academic complex of Steady Flow College of Education, a Parabong community in Ecom local government area of Cross River State, has been raised by fire. The sad incident, which occurred yesterday, destroyed academic facilities worth millions of naira, but no life was lost. It was gathered that the fire entered the school premises after a passerby mistakenly discarded a cigarette filter nearby a bush close to the perimeter fence. An eyewitness, Adagbo, stated that it was a bushfire that spread into the school premises and destroyed the facilities. 
Founder of Steady Flow College of Education and one-time National Assembly member representing Boki Ecom Federal Constituency, Honorable James Dangban, attributed the fire incident to indiscriminate bush burning. He called on National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, and the Cross River State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, to come to the aid of the institution. Well, um, we are thankful that there was no life that was lost. And we do hope that uh, proactive measures will be taken uh, from here on out to make sure that this kind of a thing does not happen. It's possible that the bushes around the perimeter fence were still so overgrown and maybe something should be done about that another time. This is a very dangerous season. This is the dry season and fire ignites as easily as anything. So this also is a warning to everybody else wherever you may be living. If you are very close to a bush, do something about it. Maybe you have to uh, trace some kind of uh, um, give it some kind of uh, uh, dressing, or how do I even put it? Make sure that the fire doesn't come close to your house here. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. But, you know, it's been said that bush burning is very dangerous and whoever is smoking, be sure that you discard your cigarette uh, where it will not cause a fire. And whoever is hunting, because sometimes it is the people who are hunting or the people who are looking for fresh grass for uh, their cattle that do the bush burning. So proactive measures to, should be put in place to make sure that these people do not do uh, these things. They do not burn the bushes just for their own uh, selfish reasons. Whether you want to catch bush meat or you want fresh grass to grow for your cattle to graze on, uh, remember also the lives that may be involved if you burn that bush. Um, okay, we'll, that's just about that. We'll just take a short break now and when we return we'll be looking at the papers and hopefully we'll see what are in the headlines that will really interest us. Stay with us.